Hello! So today I am going to be reviewing The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. I saw an ad for it and I read the little blurb and I was like, oh yes, this looks like it's up my alley. Uh, we'll get to that. All right, so um, before we start, it is important to mention a couple things. One, I'm about to spoil this entire book. Uh, two, content warning for these things it's worth noting okay and i didn't realize this and this is this is on me nikki saint crow actually has a content warning like at the beginning of the book you can click the link and it takes you to her website where she has all the content warnings i did not read those ahead of time i should have um that content warning is where i got this content warning so I'm going to read the actual blurb because I want people to understand, like, is it me? Is it my reading comprehension? Or, I mean, yes, it is. It is my reading comprehension. But, like, also, the fuck? So it says, the stories were all wrong. Hook was never the villain. Immediately, I'm like, ooh, dark fairy tale retelling. For two centuries, all of the darling women have disappeared on their 18th birthday. Sometimes they're gone for only a day, some a week or a month, but they always return broken. Now, on the afternoon of my 18th birthday, my mother is running around the house making sure all the windows are barred and the doors are locked. But it's pointless, because when night falls, he comes for me. And this time, the Never King and the Lost Boys aren't willing to let me go. And then it says, note, the Never King is a reimagining of Peter and Wendy. The characters have been aged up for this darker, grittier version. If you like your enemies to lovers romance with a hot, ruthless, morally gray love interest, you'll enjoy the Never King and the Lost Boys. You can expect hate kissing, fighting, bickering, and touch her and I'll unalive you vibes. Book one ends on a cliff. Please check the author's website for content warnings. So like I said, it is my reading comprehension that is part of the problem. But to me, okay, I will tell you where I expected this story to go. When I see a blurb that starts with, the stories were all wrong, Hook was never the villain, I went, Peter Pan's the villain. He's gonna, like, kidnap this descendant of Wendy, and she's gonna, like, escape and go find Hook, and they're gonna, like, take Peter Pan and the Lost Boys down together. That is what I was expecting, okay? Um, that is what I was expecting. Full stop. Once again, I'm stupid. I didn't read the content warnings that were available to me because I went, I don't really need content warnings. I get it. It's a dark, like gritty romance, whatever. Um, didn't realize, didn't quite realize what I was getting into. I will say this right off the bat. It is a reverse harm. Like one woman, a bunch of men, um, because I'm just gonna spoil it. It's the descendant of Wendy whose name is not, Wendy, I've forgotten her name, oh no. It's her just fucking all of them. After they kidnap her. So, you can immediately see where this is going. So here's my thing, okay? I'm not here to shame or judge what people want to read or write or anything else, but I was very caught off guard and I don't really like the book. Um, and I wanted to talk about why, and you know what, if, if this is the thing that like floats your boat, you want to read this, great. Like I, I'm not here to judge what anybody wants to read or write or, or whatever. I, um, like apparently the book is doing really well. It's getting pretty good reviews, um, and it's selling pretty well from the looks of it. And like, I think that's awesome just in the sense of like, yeah, go independent author, like do your thing. But also I bought it, I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> um, I've now read it twice because I read it the first time and was like, I'm not gonna make a video about this. It's, I don't really wanna talk about it. And then in one of my writing groups, I saw people talking about the book and how much they loved it. And I went, did I miss something? So I like read it a second time, making notes this time, like, like, like highlighting it. And I went, ew, I like it even less. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't really sure how to structure this review, whatever you want to call it, rant, dissection, I don't know. 
Um, so I figured I'd just like go through the parts of the book I highlighted and talk about them and call that good enough. Meh. The book starts off and it is Winnie Darling's 18th birthday and she's fucking one of the football players because go off, I don't know, she's not enjoying herself so alright. But uh, it's worth noting, so Winnie is like a very like sexually liberated, um, you know, I'm gonna have sex and have fun and like, great. Love, love, love that for her. Um, but also like it extends slightly too far in my opinion in the sense that like she eventually, it's basically just Stockholm Syndrome. Anyway, so that's, that's how the book starts. And once again, like, the thing is, I read the book, and then even as like things popped up at me, I was like, "Fuck, I'm just gonna finish this book." Um, if you watched, <laughs> if you watched my bad love series review, you know I'm just sort of like, uh, "I bought it, I'm gonna finish it," um, and and that's basically what this was as well. Uh, because at about the 58% mark, I realized I wasn't getting my uh, Captain Hook is actually the good guy, and she's gonna go fuck Captain Hook arc, and I decided, okay this is maybe not gonna end up being for me. So there are a couple of characters that are worth noting. There is Winnie, darling, the 18 year old. We'll talk about that in a minute. But there is Mary, her mother, who has gone crazy due to whatever happened when she was kidnapped by Peter Pan and the Lost Boys. Um, there is Peter Pan himself, who is, you know, dark, brooding, mysterious, angry, violent, etc, etc, etc. Um, there is Vane, who is also dark, angry, violent, but like double violent, etc, etc, etc. Um, I think he's my favorite character. <laughs> and not because he's a good guy or a good character, there's really nothing redeemable about this guy. Um, but he has a couple really funny like lines and they kind of made me giggle and I was like okay um by default I guess this is my favorite character because I don't give a shit <laughs> so there is also a uh, bash and Cass who are these like fey twins and I'm pretty sure their mother was Tinkerbell um and they're like lost boys they exist um one of them is apparently the nice one and one of them is like the uber violent one but they're both like relatively nice and also uber violent and everybody's very sexual and everybody's just sort of like getting it on um we'll get to that part uh and oh and then there's cherry um she is basically the only other girl that's not the fake queen um named tilly who is, uh, we'll talk about Tilly later, just put a pin in that one. Um, yeah, Cherry, uh, is a human girl from Hook's side of the island, uh, that all the guys, uh, fuck, but they don't have any respect for her because she's too easy and, um, she has a crush on Vane because every time he, uh, they, 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 they do the thing, um, he like almost kills her and I guess that's hot. Okay. Am I missing any other characters? Not really. That basically sums it up. Now, this is a very short book. I don't think you could have added very many more characters and like had them do anything. Oh, and then there's the brownie who just like exists and then dies. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So basically, uh, Winnie gets kidnapped by Peter Pan and then she gets chained to a bed and so this is bash uh like inner monologue talking um talking about him and his brother so he says we all play our parts in this and my twin has always been the gentle tour guide he's better at playing nice than the rest of us he's more like our father in that way i got our mother's first thirst for blood i don't like to watch a darling cry but i love to watch them bleed my hero and just like this is the kind of line so this next part um is the kind of line that just makes me go like ew <laughs> um and it's uh it's also bash talking it's like a page later uh we're the lost boys and there's plenty of lost pussy looking to be found 
And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just... Bullsh pussy! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it cracks me up. Anyway, um... Ah, yes, let's talk about Cherry. The next quote is a, is a thing about Cherry. Cherry, I say, the warning clear. Cass and I may be the nice ones, but we won't hesitate to put her in her place. Sorry, she says. I just mean her face pinks. She's full of freckles, empty of confidence, lacking power. We might have mistreated her over the last two years. Actually, I know we did. We stand a self-aware man. No, not in this case. Um, no, I, like I said, this is getting back to my whole issue is like, none of these guys are particularly nice or redeemable. And I get dark, gritty, da, 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 da. but like, <sighs> there has to be something like, sorry, the fact that they treat a different woman like shit is a big problem. Like Winnie Darling has really, really big, like, not like other girls pick me girl vibe. Oh, I just kicked the camera stand. That is one of those things. It's like, cool. So Winnie, when you're fucking these guys, are you just like ignoring the fact that they treat the other woman who's been really nice to you because Cherry is really nice to her. You just ignore the fact that they treat her like shit. Like that's just okay with you. Uh, there is advice. <laughs> Friend of mine said that uh, I think it was her mom gave her, which was basically look at how your prospective partner treats his mother and his sisters, if he has any, um, as to, you know, how he respects women. And I, I don't think that always like tracks 100% because there can be like extenuating circumstances, you know, a strange family, whatever. But there is definitely like, if your man or the guy you want to be your man doesn't treat other women right, you know, he's shitty about his exes and, and like, even if his exes were shitty people, he's like, uber shitty about his exes and if you know you know you know what i'm talking about that is unacceptable that that is not a guy you want to be with because if you break up he will be that shitty to you cherry's role in the entire book is basically to be the uh exposition dumper that shows up a couple times and also like wants to fuck uh some of the boys and but isn't jealous isn't isn't jealous that Winnie gets to fuck them just you know like we we can't have any conflict no 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 I think what I'm basically saying is that Cherry gets a raw deal so this next line that I highlighted I think perfectly exemplifies the fact that she is 18 and like she just turned 18 uh is a line from Cherry actually fun fact and it's the lost boys are older than they look and Pan is much much older older than me whatever happened it was before my time talking about how peter pan is basically uh like lost his shadow and is now the king of a dying island the thing is okay okay i'm not really bothered by age gaps like it's romance whatever um 18 and much much older especially when you know it's been multiple centuries since wendy existed um because they tell us it's been multiple centuries so like okay if why couldn't it have been like her 21st birthday maybe i'm splitting hairs but it seems a little like ooh, she's just barely legal like, you know like a little bit of an age gap or even like a large age gap but she was literally just turned 18 and here's the thing if she had gone and been with hook the way i thought this was gonna go um by the way hook never shows up but anyway, if she was going to go and like be with Hook the way I thought she was going to, um, the fact that he's not the guy that's been kidnapping all of her uh, like ancestors would have made the 18 thing a little more palatable. The fact that Peter Pan has met every single one of her ancestors when they were 18 and we don't fuck the darlings, but like it, it's a whole thing. So like come on like real 18 ew anyway so this quote is also about cherry i think you're seeing a pattern here and the thing that really really got me about this actually so it's peter pan talking how is she i ask vane's gaze darkens prettier than the last <laughs> not what i asked he sighs bash made her pancakes Cass was nice to her she's calm for now already asking too many questions cherry gave her too many answers fucking cherry 
She's a liability. Why the fuck do we keep her around? Because she's collateral and the kind of loyal we need. That's why. She was loyal when the twins were fucking her. Now she's desperate. She's desperate for you, I remind him and disappear into the bathroom. The twins were just a distraction. She wants you, so fuck her and keep her loyal. <laughs> I just, I like this line because like I said, Vane is like my favorite character in the sense that he's the only one that I'm kind of like, <laughs> he says, out in the room, Vane is still brooding. What, I say, spit it out. Just let me kill Cherry. Let me send a message. No. Pan! Like, <laughs> god damn it. Anyway, um, all right, next thing that I highlighted. So Winnie and Cass uh, are talking about like, you know, why she's there and all this stuff. And she says, I'm chained to a bed. It isn't like I had a choice in any of this. Cass's jaw flexes. We always have a choice. No, no, she literally did not have a choice. And even when she's like, can you not break my mind to get the thing that you want? Um, I'll help you guys. Just like, don't fuck me up. They're like, no, we have to do it this way. She doesn't have a choice. Like, full stop. No choice. She does not have a choice. This whole, oh, we all have choices. Cass, no, she didn't have a fucking choice. Fuck off. So basically, um, there's this part in the book where Winnie talks about the fact that there was a prostitute she and her mom lived next to when she was 13 that taught her all about how to basically get what she wants from men and, you know, use her assets and all this stuff. And uh, she's like, what would Starla, the, the woman, um, she's like, what would Starla do? Which, um, like, you know the bracelets that's like, what would Jesus Christ do? Like, if you have bracelets, like, what would Starla do? Because the answer is like, fuck the Lost Boys. And so, huge surprise when he's like, I'm gonna fuck the Lost Boys. So she's saying like, the way Cass's gaze lingered on me, if any of them are a weak link, it's him. Because he's the nice one, so she figures she can get him to fuck her. And here's the thing, as of right now, at this point in the book, her plan is to fuck one of them, sow discord, and then escape. That's not a horrible plan. <laughs> like, all jokes aside, this is not a horrible plan in the sense that like, it wouldn't necessarily work. She wants to escape if she can sow discord and like have them fighting amongst each other and can slip away undetected. And see, so this is where we're 28% of the way through the book. And I was like, okay, she's gonna fuck one of them and then she's gonna go for Hook. And like, like I was still in my brain, I was like, she's still gonna end up with Hook. Like that's where this is going. Why would you say Hook wasn't the villain in that big bolded first line if he doesn't show up. And then she continues that quote. She says, can he, like talking about Cass, can he take me home? Does he know how to leave the island? I'm sure I can get him on my side. In the darkness of my room, an idea takes hold. I sit up, clear my throat and call for Cass. And within minutes, his footsteps sound outside my bedroom door and my heart leaps into my throat. I'm going to fuck a lost boy. So like she has a plan and it's not, it's not a horrible plan. I'm not saying it's a bad plan. I'm just saying... So Cass goes to her room and like they talk and she's trying to, you know, make him sympathetic to her as if she apparently like has already made his dick twitch in his pants multiple times. So like, does he need to be more sympathetic? I don't, I don't know. But um, anyway, and she tries to fuck him and he's like, oh no, can't, can't do this. That's, that's not it. That's not it. And he leaves. Mm -hmm. And so then he immediately, because he's really hard and he wanted to fuck her, so he goes down to where there's like a big bonfire and like finds a random girl to suck him off. And Winnie watches from the window and is like, why is this turning me on? I can see him. Why is this turning me on? And then Bash shows up in the room because he's like, what did you say to him? Like, why is my brother grumpy? And then like Bash gets into it with her. So she says, I didn't do anything. Bash's grip on me tightens. All of you fucking darlings are the same. You act innocent like you're the victims. We are, he snorts. Keep telling yourself that. You kidnapped me. I don't want to be here. He swings me around and presses me against the wall. The air is knocked out of me. You think we want you here, he says. You think this is fun for us, watching Pan slowly die right in front of our eyes, feeling the island revolted as, as if it wants to spit us out. You think we asked for the darlings to 
He cuts himself off and takes a long, deep breath, nostrils flaring. Hannah's dying, I say. Like, I think you can kind of see my point. It's been 200 years. She legitimately is innocent, did not have a choice in any of this, didn't have a say in it, and is now at the mercy of a bunch of horny boys. And as much as they're like, oh, we don't fuck the darlings. The moment she like shows that she is like even slightly DTF, they're all over her. Let's be real. Oh yeah. So then she fucks Bash is the thing. Um, they go from that to fucking. And then Pan shows up in the room and is like really mad that Bash is like, you know, banging her. And it says, and, and so she says, I can't see Pan, but I can feel his heavy gaze on my backside. And somehow that is the most erotic thing I've ever experienced. I like it more than I should. I might have fucked half the base... Sorry, I may have fucked half the basketball team, but never at once. And so then um, they do things while Pan is sitting there um, because Pan told Bash to continue fucking her. And so he did. And anyway, here's my thing real quick. I guess I should have clarified this ahead of time. I don't have an issue with, you know, how many partners you have or or what you want to do like that is not what the issue is here like just to be very clear the issue is not that she's having fun because somebody is watching the issue is that they kidnapped her and now the thing is she's actually enjoying the sex so apparently that makes it fine then like Winnie says later uh like about that night she says I want to push a wedge in between the lost boys but I might have enjoyed last night far more than I thought I would I liked being called a whore if Pan called me a whore and fucked me and then it cuts off right so it took you like what 12 hours to be like I'm gonna find a way out of here I want to go home I don't want to be here um they're gonna screw me up because everybody is returned from this place crazy in my family 12 hours from I'm gonna fuck one of them to get them to take me home or like so discord or something too. I liked it. I want to do it more, maybe with more of them. So then this is Winnie's uh, talking about Cherry, um, which is she's lonely and desperate for attention. Something I suspect the Lost Boys will never give her. Like, why are we shitting on Cherry? <laughs> maybe Cherry's my favorite character. I don't know. So this is actually something I did like. There's some really cool world building relating to the islands in Neverland, the, the shadows that people have. And it's actually some cool world building that I was kind of excited about. Um, and this is like a pretty decent explanation um, that Cherry like exposition dumps, but it makes it really easy to explain what I thought was cool. There are more islands than Neverland. Seven islands, seven kings. Each island has two shadows, one for life, one for death. The king always claims a shadow. It's in his blood, having the ability to claim it. Her voice thins as she grows more excited. The king picks which one he wants. Pan picked life a very long time ago. But when Pan lost his shadow, he lost the power and now the island is suffering because of it. And I think Pan might be dying. The concept of two shadows is cool. Um, it's revealed later, or at some point, I don't remember, that Vane has the shadow of death from another island, which once again is a cool concept. And the whole thing with Vane is that like, apparently the shadow of death like somehow like semi semi controls him sometimes once again why he's my favorite character despite being awful he's at least kind of neat <laughs> neat we are at 43 percent i just love how bash is like i've never given in to a darling before as much as i've wanted to i like fucking i like fucking what i shouldn't even more and it's like okay buddy i get it you're horny all right <laughs> So then Winnie and Cass have a conversation because Cass finds out that Bash and Winnie had sex and is upset. And he says, my brother told me about last night. He says, ah, yes, I'm sorry he did that. Don't be, he frowns at me. I like sex, Cass, I'm not afraid of it. He sits forward, clasps his hands together. You were kidnapped and chained to a bed. Thank you, thank you. And then she proceeds to say, which made it that much more enjoyable. I smile sweetly at him. <laughs> and then like a page later, she's like, Cass makes a little cringe with his puffy lips to think of those lips on my 
Good God, I'm captive here, and all I can think about is these boys taking me. What is wrong with me? Good fucking question. And so here's the thing. When she was having these, like, I want them to screw me. I don't, like, what, what's going on? Um, this is where I thought maybe, like, something is, like, weird with the island. We're getting, like, they're, like, mind controlling her or something, and she's gonna break out of it, and she's gonna go to Captain Hook. I'm still on this. Ooh. I'm still on this, okay? I'm still on this Captain Hook train. And guess what? It doesn't happen. I'm getting very heated, I apologize. <laughs> so speaking of her being like different than all the others, you're different than the others, he says, his voice low, catching. Am I? He nods. We're always prepared for screaming and sobbing and begging when a darling comes. You're just sitting here pretending like you're on vacation. Oh, this isn't a resort? Fuck you, bitch. And then slightly further down that page, he said, like, it, it says, he frowns at me. You don't have to do that. Do what? Pretend. This island has been pretending for far too long. He turns for the door. Come out when you're ready. And then he's gone. I sit with his words a while. The problem is, I don't know how to stop pretending. Pretending what? Ah, uh, yes. So then um, the guys and Cherry decide that Winnie can go and like be, take part in like the bonfire they do at night. And one of the other like random lost boys who does not have a name um, gets kind of frisky with her and she's like, oh, why not? So then she um, starts like making out with him and shit. And then Peter Pan shows up in a blind rage because one of the lost boys that is not one of the named lost boys uh, is is touching his darling. And so he rips the boy's heart out. Just in front of everybody, just burp, burp. And uh, then proceeds to very aggressively uh, screw Winnie over the kitchen counter and, and then um the uh brothers Cass and Bash uh uh from either end um to uh be because why not and and Winnie is just loving it she's having the time of her life so then that happens and there's this really weird point where uh Bash says, brother, he says, get over here. Cass hesitates and I lift off the table to look down the length of it at him. There is something dark in his eyes, a hunger he doesn't want to satiate. And then I'm, here's the thing, okay? I don't want to read this part out loud. So I'm just going to put it on the screen and you can, can, you can be upset. So um, that all happens. And then uh, when she's done, she's like, is Vane going to take me next? Uh, Vane proceeds to spit in her mouth and basically say that he's not going to touch her. And the thing is, it's implied at different points throughout the book that he won't fuck her, not because he doesn't want to, but because he is concerned that he will kill her if they screw. So the thing that makes Vane slightly like funnier <laughs> to me is uh, br before the whole ripping the heart out thing happens, um, Vane goes to find Peter Pan to tell him that she is fraternizing. Peter Pan says, I'm pulled from my sleep by someone kicking my bed. This better be important. The twins are throwing a party, Vane says, and the darling is drunk. I lurch upright, a foreign emotion burning in my chest. The fuck? I know, that's what I said. Why didn't you stop them? Or her for that matter? I'm not her babysitter. Vane for fuck's sake. <laughs> and I just, I don't know why, but it's its not even a line that Vane says. It's just a Vane for fuck's sake. <laughs> and I just fucking lost my shit because that to me is so funny. <laughs> Sorry, Boo is my cat who uh, really recently actually climbed on top of my- He is the reason we have baby locks on our refrigerator despite not having children. Uh, because he pushes the refrigerator open it. Not to do anything, just to leave it open while our food spoils. Anyway, so to be very clear, uh, after this orgy, I don't know what to call it. Uh, this is the point I realized, okay, she is not ending up with Captain Hook. Damn it. <laughs> So right after all of the sex, she she's thinking, there's still blood on his hand and it finally registers that he killed someone, then fucked me. 
What is happening? And why the hell do I feel so fucking amazing right now? Is this part of the madness driving me to new heights of pleasure and debauchery? But no, they don't fuck darlings, or at least they didn't before me. Girl, if you had larger pick me vibes, the aliens would be picking you up, okay? From the fucking spaceships. Oh, and then the line at the end of this chapter, I don't know where I expected this night to go, but it wasn't here. I am no longer lost. I think I might have finally been found. They kidnapped you! Eh. I, I just can't, I'm sorry. I like highlighted the things, but now it's just funny. Um, Peter Pan, I catch up to Vane out in front of the house. I'm going to murder something. Care to join me? Obviously. <laughs> They're so casual. Like, oh yeah, we all just like kill things on this island as if killing doesn't have real consequences. And yeah, you're so desensitized to it. That doesn't make it okay. Like, and then later down, where are we going? Vane asks, let's go kill some pirates. Twist my arm. <laughs> like, Oh man, I don't know why this is so funny to me because I don't think it's supposed to be funny is the thing. And I think that's maybe why I find it so funny. Like, I think it's supposed to be like, look at how cool and dark and broody. And, um, and no, it's just funny. So then uh, they go kill some pirates that I guess are like men of hooks, but like, whatever. And then she like, when he tries to fuck Vane and he like grinds on her a bit and then fucks off. At 80% through the book, we understand. So basically the whole thing is that at some point, uh, Tinkerbell, because she was mad, because he loved, Peter Pan loved Wendy, Tinkerbell like steals his shadow and like hides it or something. I don't fucking know. Um, so then he kills and then, and then Tinkerbell kills Wendy. And so he kills Tinkerbell. And at that point, uh, they wanted to know where the shadow was. And so apparently memories are passed down by blood or some shit like that. So he like keeps kidnapping the darlings on their 18th birthday. Um, so that on the full moon, the fae queen Tilly can come and like rummage around in their head for like where it's hidden. Um, so yeah, at like 80% through the book, okay, cool. It's been two days. Um, she's like fucked all the guys except Vane cause he won't fuck her. Um, and then Tilly's gonna like show up and rummage around in the head. And like Winnie's thing at this point has been that she'll help them. She just doesn't want to go crazy. And apparently the rummaging around in the head is what makes her ancestors go crazy. Also, Tilly is the younger sister of Cass and Bash. It doesn't really seem to matter, but it is a thing. Um, and also they're all children of Tinkerbell, apparently, I think. So um, yeah, at 80%, we uh, finally get a villain, I guess, um, because it seems like Tilly is maybe not the person that is actually doing the best she like actually wants to take over the island and we kind of knew that beforehand but like this was when we still thought Peter Pan was the issue and that it was gonna be Hook and maybe then Tilly teaming up with Winnie against Peter Pan like to clarify right so yeah so then um Tilly shows up and starts rummaging around in Winnie's head and then the person that actually stops the process before it's done to everybody's shock I guess, um, is vain and because, oh, this is, this is enough and oh, you know, where I come from, all these women get hurt and broken just cause they're weak like you did. And Winnie, uh, then just remembers that her family, one of the only things they carry with them when they travel, trying to stay away from Peter Pan, is this like big trunk that's like her great, great, great grandmother's or whatever. And, uh, she's like, I know where the shadow is. It's in the trunk. And it's like, bitch, why are you the first person out of generations to be like, maybe it's in that weird trunk that we, we just store family heirloom shit in. Nobody thought, so it has like a little hidden compartment because they then go back to earth. They find the trunk and like two seconds and she like finds a little hidden compartment and they find the box that they are assuming has the shadow in it. And the thing is when they get to the house, um, there's a brownie there, um, like a, like one of, like the fake creature, there's like a bunch of brownies. And so then the guys have like a really underwhelming fight scene where they like slaughter all the brownies, um, who are trying to make sure that Peter Pan doesn't get his shadow back. 
um, on orders of Queen Tilly. And uh, yeah, so then they just kill them and it's just chill, whatever. And then Peter Pan has his shadow back. Exciting, exciting. And yeah, so then the whole thing is like, they don't want to open the box until they're back in Neverland. So they get back to Neverland. And here's the thing. So Winnie's like, I want to go back with you. Take me back. I feel like I belong there. I want to be with you all. And they're like, yeah, okay. So they take her back, which like, yeah, um, I guess makes sense because they're all screwing her or want to screw her. So they take her back and they open up the box and out oh, jump two shadows. And that's the cliffhanger. And with that, I have described a pretty large portion of this book uh, front to back. Look, I didn't really like it. I have multiple issues. The biggest one being she was kidnapped. And like, once again, had I read the content warnings, I would have been aware of this. Um, like I was aware she was getting kidnapped. I would have been aware that like she was getting kidnapped and then screwing them. Not saying she has Stockholm syndrome. I'm just saying that she's 18 and sorry, 18 year olds are technically adults, but they're still fucking dumb. Um, so she's 18 and suggestible and dumb. And oh, she had to grow up too fast. You know what? 18 year olds that had to grow up too fast are still 18 year olds. They just, you know, there's a little bit more to it, but you get my point. So, and then they just, lots of sex. And um, the thing is, nothing is particularly well described in the sense that like the sex scenes aren't particularly titillating, um, pun intended. The fight scene wasn't particularly titillating. <laughs> Like, it's just one of those things, nothing's described super, like, super in-depth. You know, if you're gonna go for this, like, sort of reverse harem, raunchy, orgy, you know, thing, if the sex was at least, like, hot and steamy, there's, like, a re bit of redemption there, because, okay, like, it's a guilty pleasure, like, hot, steamy read, but it wasn't that. Um, it was just kind of gross, and didn't have the hot steamy bit to like even slightly make up for it. The other thing is that it is a very short book and there's nothing wrong with that, but like everything feels very condensed. Everything happens over the course of like two days and there's just so much that happens so quickly and all the chapters are really short, which I generally don't have an issue with, but like, yes, yeah, so there's like six or seven POVs in this and it just, it's jumbled. I don't have a good grasp on who any of these characters are. Um, Winnie's only real trait is that she likes sex. I guess wants to feel like she belongs. Peter Pan is dark and brooding and apparently was a vicious king, but yet we're all just gonna let him get his shadow back apparently. Like that's a whole thing. Um, like the brownie even says like, oh, he was a vicious king. And it's like, then why the fuck are we letting him be king again? <laughs> the reason I, I like quote unquote vain is because at least he has like a little bit of a personality. Like there's this idea that like he's at war with his shadow and it's like, okay, that's actually kind of interesting. That's like a defining character trait. Okay, so this has been a longer review than I wanted to do, but I wanted to talk about this book because it, like I said, it's doing really well and I nothing but respect for anybody that's enjoying it or or like uh, like Nikki St. Crow herself, like no issue there, okay? It wasn't for me. I'm explaining why it wasn't for me. I'm explaining the things that kind of got under my skin a little bit. I will not read it again. I have now read it twice. I think you can write a story that has elements of like this Dubcon, like Stockholm Syndrome type thing. Um, and you can have it be a fun, gritty, dark romance type thing. But, but it needed, the characters needed more time than just two days and she needed to not be 18. Like there, I think there in, in an alternate reality, there is a version of this book that is about double to triple the length with a slow burn and some actual like redeeming characteristics of the men and a little bit more like uh exploring of the psychology behind what is going on with them and a little more explanation of what's going on with Winnie and I think you can you can write that and and have it have all of these things while making a little more sense because really none of this feels 
real like she just is suddenly okay with this like these are men that she like knows could kill her and she's just like oh yeah this is fine i'm turned on like to me that is where the issue is because you are dealing with very sensitive very delicate and potentially very icky topics when you just have them go and go and go and go at fucking breakneck speed you end up with a story that really doesn't do anything it's not thought provoking when i think about thought provoking you know dub con uh I mean, this isn't really a romance, but like this, this dub con, like Stockholm syndrome type thing. I think of Held by Adit Ravel, which is like a very thought, I still think about this book all the fucking time. Um, it was really thought provoking in how it did, uh, explored this stuff. It, it was a short book, but the actual events of the story took place over, I think a couple months. And that's the thing. You can have a short book, but this was a short book and a quick timeline within the book. I, I don't really have much else to say, honestly. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you've read the book, let me know because I'm desperate to hear other people's opinions on this. I just want to know. And, and I don't mind, obviously. If, if you have a different opinion, please tell me. Like, if maybe I'm missing something somewhere or I'm not. And you're just like, hey, you're making a bigger deal out of XYZ thing. Let me know. I, I just want to talk to people about books. But yeah, that's it. Uh, see you next time. Bye.